Hello world. In this video, I'll be setting up an object detection program using OpenCV that greets you when you walk into the camera frame and then says goodbye when you're, it looks like you're walking off. So I've done object detection before on a Raspberry Pi, but the max frames per second drops to about four or five and it just doesn't become usable for a program. So if you're interested in that, you can watch that video by clicking here. So this code doesn't use a TensorFlow, NumPy, and all of that in the active program. It just uses OpenCV and some SSD mobile net files, which I'll show you where to get um, in later. And so let's check this out. So I'm going to start the program off the camera and then slowly come into camera and then you'll hear the computer say um, something and then I will walk off. So here we go. So I'm not all the way in the um, frame yet, so let's check out what happens when I do. Hello. How are you? Okay, so it currently sees me about now. And what we're doing is we're printing out the label of a person and then uh, the confidence level. So when I turn away, it's going to say goodbye. Talk to you later. And there you go, that's our program. All right, so now let's check out the code. But first, welcome to the 172nd video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you're interested in watching me build my own digital assistant or um, into robotics, AI, Python programming, etc. Like this video if you enjoyed it or plan on using the code and leave a comment and tell me what you're working on. So now let's check out the code. So most of the code, uh, you can find a more simple version of just the OpenCV object detection on um, Mirzada's workshop. He's one of my favorite computer vision YouTube channels and I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So the first thing you'll need to do is import CV2. Uh, if you have never worked with it before, you'll need to pip install OpenCV-Python and then import PYTTSX3, that's Python text to speech version three for Python three, and you just pip install that same thing. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to create some variables and a function outside of the uh, computer vision while loop. So first for the text to speech, we're going to do engine equals pyttsx3.init, call it. So um, we're going to initialize the speech to text or text to speech engine. And then we're going to create a simple function and I'm just calling it AI speak. Uh, we're going to pass it a command and then engine.say, so the engine we initialized here, whatever command we pass it, and then engine.run and wait. So it's going to run this command and then wait. Um, and then the engine will just stay on. Now we get into the variables. So first you'll do cap equals cv2.video capture. Zero is your default uh, webcam of your computer. If you have a USB webcam, then you can go ahead and change that to one. Then we're going to just set our frame size. So cap.set, and then we're going to pass it three, and then 640 pixels. Cap.set four, 480 pixels. So the, the width and height. We're going to create an op a dictionary for all the class names. And those class names cohere in this coco.names. And these are all the different objects that this SSD mobile net can uh, figure out to some sort of confidence level. So this is 80 different objects. And you can get those files by coming to this GitHub. And I will put it in the description. But basically, you just need to download this coco.names this frozen inference graph.pb and this SSD mobile net version 3 large cocoa 2020 and 
I'll put a link in the description where you can download those files. So many tutorials do not have those files. I don't know why, but um, I think it's always important to give credit to where credit is due. So when you save those files, make sure you save them if you're using Py PyCharm in the root folder. And that way you can just put the actual name of the file. If not, let's say you leave it in your downloads folder, you would have to pass the full path um, of whatever your computer's downloads folders are like that in a string. So the class file equals coco.names. And then what we're going to do is with open class file, so this coco.names text file, we're going to read text as f. So class names equals f.read. And then we're going to strip any spaces and then split any spaces, right? So all we're doing is making each one of these its own um, object. Then the configuration path is this SSD mobile net pb.txt that you can find here. And then the weights path is this frozen inference file. Again, they're in my root folder in my PyCharm projects. So um, just make sure you track where you're downloading these two. Then we're going to set up a net. So that's the uh, network that we're using to kind of train this. So network equals CV2. Um, that's that's here. Or that's um, what we imported here. So CV2.dnn underscore detection model. So we're using a detection model and we're going to pass it this weights path and this configuration path. The input size is 320 by 320. The input scale, so you're just um, adjusting the detection model that um, CV2 uses. So these will all adjust kind of the um, how accurate it is. So um, I'm not going to go into depth because I don't know too much on what happens if you change it. I watched about five tutorials on YouTube and on the internet and these are all the same variables. So I would just pause here and um, uh, get it yourself. So the next thing we want to do, so when you're using camera vision, you're going to do a while loop code, right? This is, this is common in every camera function. And so every frame per second, you're going to do something, right? And so what we have to do is keep track of how many times when you see somebody in real life, you only say hello once, right? And you only say goodbye once. But if this was frames per second, which is how computers see, then we have to keep track. So we're just going to set this notification count to zero, right? That means nothing has happened yet. And now we're going to turn on our camera and um, start um, passing, you know, running the camera loop. So while true, so basically until you end this program, you're going to pass it two variables here, success, which we don't really use in this, and image, IMG, equals cap, which is what we uh, did up here, this cap, dot read, and then call it. So you're going to get a lot of errors when you're working with camera vision, so you need to either try and accept them or kind of anticipate what kind of errors you're going to get. So if the image is none, so then we're going to print wrong webcam selection. So if I um, put this as one and try to run the program and I don't have a USB, the image will be none and you'll get an error, right? And so we're going to capture that. And so the, the error will still force you to quit the program, but at least it tells you what's wrong. So else, so basically if I selected the right webcam, Else, we're going to establish a variable called class IDs, conferences, or conference levels, so C-O-N-F-S, and the bounding box. And you get all of that through this net.detect. So if you skip one of these variables, like you don't plan on using it, you will get an error, um, probably an unboxing error. So to handle that, you could do that, but I don't suggest that. I suggest capturing all of these because you'll most likely need them in any project. So you're going to pass it the image and this um, confidence threshold. So 0.5 seems to be the most common, but go ahead and play with that if it's too sensitive or not sensitive enough. 
Then I'm going to bound this all in a try and accept. So in PyCharm it gives you these lines. So we're going to try all this cool stuff and if, if it doesn't work, so if any of these go wrong, you get a type error. And if that happens, just pass. Go to the next frame and keep passing. All right, so if the length of the class IDs does not equal zero, so if it's finding something and it's in here and it's not zero, we're gonna keep going. If it is zero, then we're just gonna pass on to the next frame per second. But let's say it finds a class ID, a confidence, and a box. In, in, so if, if the class ID is zero or greater, so if it finds any one of these 80 things, it's gonna come down here into this for loop. And then it's gonna say for each class ID, confidence and box, which is what you get for every uh, net.detect, in zip, class IDs dot flatten, confidences, so CONFS dot flatten and B box. So we want each class ID in this. Then we're going to try again, try to do all these things and if this doesn't work, you get an index error. Because what you're doing is each one of these is now an index. And if something goes wrong, you'll get an index error. If we get that, guess what? We'll pass. All right? So the label equals the class names, right? So we're in this uh, empty dictionary is now filled with all the, I'm sorry, these class names is now filled with all these class names. So uh, equals class ID minus one. So it's in here. So what this is is an index and we want the actual count. So if you're not familiar with the indexes, it starts with zero, which is the first thing in the index. What we're trying to do is cover for that and dot upper. Um, these are not in uppercase. We just did that for the labels. You can get rid of this if you don't want um, person capitalized or whatever label you're trying to find. And then the confidence, I just want a basically a rounded uh, integer. So the confidence is actually a, a larger number, um, point zero zero, you know, point number number, so point 76. So I want that as 76, basically a percentage. And I want it rounded. So confidence equals rounded, confidence times 100, which moves the decimal places over twice. And then I want to round it to the second place. So 76.5 or whatever percent. So for this code, I'm just trying to figure out if I'm a person or not. So if the label equals person, and remember we uppercase this. So if you remove this uppercase, make sure you uh, see it's lowercase here. So you're going to want to lowercase this. And the confidence is over 70. So... Um, as soon as I walk into frame, the confidence goes above 70. And then when I walk out of the frame, it goes below 70. So if, if it's a person and not a pen, and the confidence is above 70, we're going to draw that green rectangle by doing cv2.rectangle. We're passing the image. We're passing the box coordinates. This color is green. I think it's RGB. And then the thickness is two, so that's two pixel wide box. I also want to put the text, so cv2.put text. I want to put it on the image. What do I want to put? This label. Then we want it box, so this is the coordinates. So the zero width index of the box is the top left. And we want that, um, I believe it's the top, yeah. So we want it 10 pixels. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is the left. And so we want it 10 pixels past the left, and we want it 30 pixels below the top, which is this box number one, I think. I might have switched those. We're going to pass it this font. This is just the most common font I always see. You can see what other fonts just by typing cv2.font underscore, and you'll see simple or Hershey simple, I believe, is another one. We want it one pixel wide. Or we just want one line and then we want it green, which is 0, 255, 0, and then two pixels wide. PyCharm doesn't like this, but this is not an error. Um, this is perfectly fine. I think I have another one. Same with this one. It doesn't like this second. It's unexpected. Um, I think that's just a PyCharm error, not an error in this documentation. Same thing with this class names. It does not like 
this uh, class names in this with open clause. All right, and then just for ourselves is if I see a person, I want to print the label plus the little semicolon which you saw, and then I want a string of the confidence. And so if it finds a person confidence level over, it's going to draw this rectangle and this box and print this down here. But if the notification is zero, which means this is the first time it's seeing this person, which is me, we're going to pass it this function. So AI speak, hello, how are you? And we're passing it to this function we started in the beginning. So hello, how are you is placed here. And then it says it. All right. And then we're going to increment by one. So now the notification count is one. So every frame per second, and I believe the default is 30 frames per second in CV in OpenCV, it's not going to say hello, how are you again. However, if, um, if the notification is above zero and this no longer happens, right? So it's let's say the notification is one, which means it's already said hello, how are you? Then if it if I walk out of the frame and it's the label is no longer person and or the confidence is great, lower than 70, it's going to say talk to you later and then it'll reset the notification count to zero. So this accept index error I already talked about, this else, which is up here, I already talked about and this accept type error I already talked about. So basically if none of my, if I suck at coding, it'll pass to the next frame and keep passing. Then we want to show the image, so cv2.image show. Output is just the name of the little box that pulls up and the image. The wait key is one, but we're just going to kill the program. And that's it. So all of this is in this try loop and all of this is in the while loop. So let's check it one last time now that you have an understanding of what the code is. So I'm currently not in the frame enough for it to detect me. And now I'm going to walk into the frame. Hello. How, How are, are you? you? All right. So it Talk is. Talk to you later. Hello. How are you? Talk to you later. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Talk to you later. Hello. How are you? Talk to you later. Hello. How are you? Talk to you later. All right. So uh, you can see my sensitivity is very high, so I need to adjust the sensitivity so it doesn't um, maybe put the notification count greater than 15 or something like that to prevent what you just saw because the confidence level was right at 70 and it was going back and forth. So I can change this to maybe 73, 74, who knows. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you're working on something with OpenCV, please leave a link in the description or in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Goodbye world.